Um, doctor, you were talking about the product uh, productivity being a major concern, and this is why the symposium is happening. Why this school to spearhead this project? Because it seems like any other province, any other school could have done it, but school public policy has decided to do it. Why you guys? Well, we are, if I may say, the leading policy school in Canada on, on, on these type and many other type of economic policy questions. So it's natural for us to host this kind of an event. I also think there's some real unique insight in Alberta to help contribute to the national conversation on this, and we're well positioned to kind of leverage that. The mission of the school, you know, is <laughs> global, focused, practical, right? And, and that's really what the aim is here. What we try and do in a lot of our work is ensure that it's practical, actionable, concrete and solutions oriented and that's been missing from the productivity conversation a lot of folks have have held events even on this issue but mainly around clarifying the existence of the problem itself rather than thinking about concrete and actionable solutions and that's our goal are you getting buy-in from other schools, other organizations, other stakeholders across the country? I know this is day one of the official announcement, but are you seeing people saying, yes, let's do this and let's have this conversation as frank as we need to have it? That's right. So we have been planning and organizing, and that work still is ongoing. As you know, it's early days, uh, but commitments from uh, academics, from industry, from private sector economists all across the country uh, who are going to be coming and sharing their insight and expertise. So we're fleshing out uh, the program to the event, but so far a lot of buy-in. Uh, I think the interest is very high and uh, where there is a decline to an invite we send, it's, it's not because of a lack of interest, it's just conflicts with other things. We talk about the Canadian productivity challenge, but I want to focus more on the rural and urban divide of the productivity challenge. Do you see that there's more focus on the urban productivity challenge rather than the rural? And how do we focus more on rural productivity uh, solutions when we are so people focused and more people live in urban centers? Yeah, so the biggest difference that's relevant here for that urban rural split will be uh, what sectors are we talking about when we think about economic activity in these areas and part of what the summit will do is have several different sectoral focuses to really shine a light on challenges and opportunities in different areas including things like agriculture and resource development which are at the margin more um, account for more economic activity in rural areas than urban and so we're going to have that broad um, that, that broad coverage across sectors including things like agriculture final question and it's kind of a loaded question so i apologize if it comes out of left field is this not saying that we failed on the productivity challenge already and we need to sort of find solutions for problems that were 10 15 years old no i wouldn't say that we have failed on the productivity challenge first canada has it's a vast geography with a relatively low population for its size. We're also very decentralized, and so there's a lot of fundamental reasons why Canadian productivity might be behind other more denser, more unitary states. Uh, and that doesn't mean we failed, it just means we're in a different set of circumstances. And the question is then, are we performing at the highest level that we can, given those constraints given those circumstances and what's changed recently is not that um, I'd say that we've failed in any particular sense is that circumstances have changed rapidly right it has been and I don't just mean COVID even prior to that a lot of challenges for Canada think about the increasing uncertainty in the global trading environment for a small open economy like Canada that's a significant shock and policy needs to evolve when circumstances change. And naturally, of course, policy evolves as it should, relatively slowly. So the world has changed very rapidly. Uh, policy does need to keep up, and the summit is there to help shift the conversation towards those solutions that we should do. But I wouldn't say that we've failed. It's just that the challenge has grown.
Okay, so now I have a follow-up question to that. Um, usually we talk about productivity when after a recession, during a recession, or at the beginning of a recession, or during times of economic challenges. We look at the 80s when we saw the coming out of the early 90s and the economic challenges of space. We saw 2008 with the economic challenges. Are you looking at the past to look at the future as well to say what were the best practices then to get through that productivity challenges and how can we use them today? Or is this a fresh start to say we're just going to look at everything clean slate? No, we will be bringing in insight from the past, both from researchers, but also decision makers and policy makers who went through these experiences in the past. Best practices don't themselves need to speak directly to you know, particular tax rates or structures, but about the process that we used to overcome some of these past challenges, the 1990s or the financial crisis, for example. So that's where a lot of really important lessons will be learned. Or sometimes we have moments in Canadian history where policy changes significantly and managing that change is difficult and how to do that successfully that's also where some really important insight will come through. Final question. Promise is my final question. Why should Canadians worry about the productivity challenges that Canada is facing right now? Because we're talking about the solutions, but if you don't have buy-in from the Canadian public, you're not going to actually find these solutions useful because they're not going to buy in. So it's clear that the most pressing economic challenge for Canadians today is the affordability challenge. And we think about that as just higher prices. Now, higher prices themselves is not the problem. If income growth exceeded the pace of price increases, then we wouldn't have the same type of affordability challenge that we do. So behind rising prices and, and low income growth, so lower real income, if you will, behind that is productivity. If you look at labor productivity changes over time and the average inflation adjusted hourly compensation that workers get, they track perfectly. I don't think the variation every now and then uh, from quarter to quarter or year to year, but over long spans of time, productivity is behind increases in our standard of living, period. And so if we're concerned about the affordability challenge today, you have to be concerned about the productivity challenge as well. Perfect. Thank you so much. You Greatly appreciate it. Thank you. No worries.